A day may come when the courage of men fails, when we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. But it is not this day. An hour of wolves and shattered shields when the age of men comes crashing down. But it is not this day. This day we fight by all that you hold dear on this good earth. I bid you stand, men of the West! Hello, everybody. I'm the Last Pretender, and uh, this is our Pretender creation portion of our M.A. Man Redemption series. So, as you recall, uh, we're playing M.A. Man, and today I'm going to go over a little bit about Pretender creation when it comes to man. Okay, so I just want to jump in real quick. Um, I'm going to be going over different pretenders, and particularly one of the things I'm going to be talking about is magic diversity within M.A. Man. And uh, past me, clever as he may be, uh, did not mention a very important fact, which is that I'm basically not going to be looking at blood magic. I don't think you necessarily need blood magic in order to win as M.A. Man, and I personally didn't want to. Reason being is like, well, one, M.A. Man doesn't have any national blood spells, so that you know is weaker right generally speaking the best uh blood spells are going to be ones that are nation nation only and uh second of all like i kind of feel like the vibe of ma man is kind of a thorian you know kind of feel to it and like sacrificing virginal women so that you can use their blood to empower your magic doesn't seem like an like a king author kind of thing to do uh so sort of for role play i guess you could say uh, I decide not to use blood magic, and I'm gonna basically just put aside that that uh, that spell path and just sort of give up on it. Um, now, the way that you would rectify this, particularly whenever you're looking at like rainbow pretenders and stuff like that, would just basically to be able to put a couple points in blood magic so that you can blood hunt and then slowly build up a blood economy and power up that way. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. So. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I kind of want to talk about the different kind of options that you have available to you and, and why you might choose them. So I'll start with the, the easiest, which is sort of your beast kind of super, com uh, not really like early expander class. Um, and in and uh, the Lich Master and, uh, and like uh, Ghost King and stuff, I'm going to kind of categorize them with your, uh, with your just sort of uh, Dominion 1, uh, even though they're Dominion 2. Same thing with the uh, Demi Lich. I'm going to kind of put them with like your sort of rainbow uh, mages and that sort of thing. So, but whenever it comes to your early expanders, uh, in my personal opinion, you've got, a, you got a couple choices, but not really many. So, in my personal opinion, your best choice is probably going to be the, uh, the Thrice Horned Boar. So the reason is, is because uh, this guy can expand just like this. Okay? He can expand just like this right out of the box. He's got Berserker. He can trample. He's going to recuperate wounds. And uh, he's very cheap. Uh, the way I would build him is I, I wouldn't give him... I, I wouldn't give him any, any of this. I would probably do something like... Uh... Probably something like this, I think. I mean, I, I might, I might put a point here and there, just because. Um, yep. So I'd probably do something like this whenever I'm actually looking at him. So why would I go in this? Like I said, we're not putting any bless effects on him because he can expand just like he is right out the box, no problem whatsoever. So this makes him very good for that. Uh, you do want to avoid things like cavalry and barbarians because those will kill him uh there's a couple things that'll kill him but like you know your average militia um uh those sorts of things are usually not going to be a problem and so um you know you know various the like deer tribe and all that kind of stuff um woodsmen that th th those guys should be handled pretty effectively by the thrice horn boar without any major problems and it'll help you expand very very quickly um, so this is an excellent, excellent guy if you want to do that. Um, you need to be careful with him. You need to be careful with him if you're going to do this guy. But he's pretty good. 
Um, as far as the actual points I'm putting into this, so five dominions, kind of the minimum. It's kind of the lowest end that you might want to actually do whenever it comes to dominion. Uh, and then you want to try and get as good of scales as you can. So luck scales, going uh, luck misfortune two is pretty good. Um, misfortune three is whenever you get a big jump in kind of really bad events that can start hitting you. But in misfortune two, you'll get bad events, but they won't be that terrible. Uh, the reason I like to go heat scales is because uh, murderous winter, I believe it's called. Uh, let me double check that and make sure I'm not wrong. Is it? It's mur It's murdering winter. I always get the name wrong. Murdering winter is a spell. Um, that is absolutely freaking devastating to uh, human nations, nations, the people that have low HP. And so this is going to help you defensively, at least against that spell. So I like to go heat scales, um, but, uh, uh, and heat scales are kind of like, they're not as bad as it says they are, uh, because of the fact that like during the winter, right, your scales are actually going to be perfect. So heat scales are actually not as bad though they're still pretty rough um in fact lucid tactics actually has quite a good video on heat on scales um with temperature scales and stuff that i think is really worth a watch um so go check him out but this does protect you from murderous winter which is nice uh i like to go three magic because magic because uh i think that magic scales are super necessary for ma man because research is just such a freaking huge impact on man's strength because their nature and air magic gives them so many different options and gives them such a wide variety of spells and access to different things that they can do that i i think that three magic is i think it's pretty much required for no matter what you're going to do with your pretender personally i have i've had real struggles whenever i don't go magic i, I think this is the best play but uh with that said, I, I mean, I, I've won without magic, but I, I'm a firm believer that it really helps a lot. Uh, now, as far as the other ones, um, I like to go with productivity uh, as your primary. You need at least productivity too, and it has to do with basically Knights of Avalon creation. You're gonna wanna have that churning out early as fast as you can. And so you can do productivity too, and it'll function just fine. I like to go productivity three because more resources is more better um, and can kind of help you. I mean, you can see there's a pretty significant jump in uh, in uh, in going up one point in productivity. And uh, you could also easily justify doing this uh, and giving yourself a little more growth scales, but I really like productivity. I think it's really good. And maintaining a high resource count is going to help you, again, with early expansion, which is sort of the focus of this build. Uh, I then like to go two order instead of instead of two growth. The reason I put a little bit more in order is because I'm going misfortune. I do think that growth is a superior scale, particularly late game. But maintaining that lower, uh, that, that higher order is going to decrease uh, random events, which kind of is a good is a good way to kind of counterbalance a little bit the, uh, the misfortune scales. Also, um, always having more recruitment points is a big deal for man um, because you are a nation that's going to need big armies uh, because that's kind of the big strength of your, your nation. So this is kind of your, your first option. So that's your Dominion 2s. Next, I'll go ahead and talk about your Dominion. Uh, well, I guess I can talk a little bit more about some other options that you have. Uh, I think the dragon isn't bad your sort of green dragon now for this i do tend to feel like you kind of need to get regeneration but in order to build this like you kind of put yourself in the hole a little um and there's not really like a super lot you can do with it i would i would probably do a build something like this um this gives you a better pretender he's going to be able to expand very well He's going to kill most things, even barbarians and stuff, I don't think are really going to have a good time against this guy. This is an option. It also lets you have like a flying kind of raider if you want to at some point. Um, if you Early game if you're being attacked. I actually don't like this, but he's kind of okay. If you want something that's safer than the boar, that'll expand well, but it's just a little bit safer than the boar, I would actually go ahead and go with... Hmm, excuse me. I would go ahead and go with uh, this fella right here, the Earth Serpent. Now, 
with the Earth Serpent, um, you're, you're sort of in a similar situation, which is to say that you don't have very good scales. These are these are functional, um, but they're not good. Um, but the advantage of going the Earth Serpent is that he's much tougher because he's you're able to pump up that uh, that Earth magic, and and you can give him something like Hard Skin. You can obviously decrease this, but uh, Earth Magic does uh, have a side effect of increasing your protection values, and this guy already has a pretty good protection value. You can even realistically kind of just do nothing with him and maybe put a point here and there, but that's a little bit riskier. And I think if you're going with the Earth Serpent, you're doing it to have a safer expansion phase and to try and really clean out those um, those neutrals. And like an Earth Serpent with this build, I think uh, pretty much you can blind expand. Like I feel perfectly comfortable blind expanding with this guy. In fact, like that's one of the reasons I would pick him is if, if I wanted to do some blind expansions. He's one of the best exp <clears throat> expanders and uh, he's good. He's a good unit. Um, but again, I think that when it comes down to it, your best is going to be the Thrice Horned Boar. He can expand very easily. He's very cheap. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I really think that he's your best option. I really do. Um, so that's kind of your Dominion 2s. I really wouldn't mess with any of the other ones. Maybe you guys have some clever concept of ideas and things you can do with these dudes, but I know I sure don't. You could maybe fool with the Dog of the Underworld by the way, uh, because like he's got a good bit of HP pool and stuff, but his protection kind of sucks. You'd have to give him kind of a bless to make him work. And... Eh. Um, I don't really love the Dog of the Underworld either, but he's okay-ish. And he does have a fear effect, which is nice, which, which really helps expanding, expanding when the Thrice Horn 4 doesn't. But uh, that's the general concept behind your Dominion 2. Maybe you can come up with a better idea than what I've got, but my general opinion Thrice Horn Boar is the best. Uh, you might want to go Earth Serpent if you really want to be careful and have a safe expansion. I think Thrice Horn Boar is better because you're going to be able to get much better scales with it. Um, or you can get the Dragon if you really want to do something kind of weird. And, you know, you do have a little bit of a national bonus for it, so that's nice. But uh, that's kind of what we're looking at. Now, looking at Dominions 3. Uh, so, putting the Demi Lich aside for a second, uh, which is not a bad one, by the way. There's some advantages to going Demi Lich, but. Uh, taking a look at these guys themselves, I don't think these guys, none of these are very good expanders. I mean, maybe the Great Mother, the Great Mother is actually pretty good. Um, but I don't know why you would choose her over like a Thrice Horn Boar. Like, I have no good idea. Um, I mean, I, I, I no, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know why you'd go Great Mother. I, I don't have a good concept for it. Um, most, as far as the rest of these, your best one's going to be the t -Waz of War. Uh, this guy is, is definitely going to be your best one. He's got really good, um, paths, right? Fire, so you can get, like, that, that, uh, what is it, Phoenix? Not Phoenix Power. Phoenix Pyre. So that way he's going to be hard to kill. You can put a point here and there, and you can Cloud Trapeze and cast Mist Form. Um, some points here can be pretty good. Um, <clears throat> you, you have a couple options to work with him. Uh, I would try to put at least a point or two in air magic. Um, I'd make this guy dormant. Put a point in fire magic, probably, so you can cast Phoenix Pyre without having to load him up with fire gems. Uh, probably put a point in air magic. That's helpful. I would probably put at least one point in earth magic, just because then right away you can get off the ground forging uh, earthen boots and stuff like that. Um, and this is okay. Now, at this point in time, you build something that looks a little like, like this, probably. I think this is a pretty good build. Um, you've got great scales, obviously. You've got a dormant uh, pretender who's going to operate very, very well as a super combatant. He's going to kick a lot of butt. Um, he's got good spell paths. Uh, there's some problems with him. Some of them are not as bad as others. So one of the problems with him is he's a size 5, which is going to leave him susceptible to being killed by, um, by air elementals. Now, the good news with this is that um, you do have a, a wide berth of nature mages, and so you're going to be able to cast enlarge on him, get him to size 6, and he can start tearing through. Uh, other problems with this guy, um, he doesn't really help you too much with your magical diversity. He does get you that 2 in fire, which is nice. It means you just need a 1 fire item to have 3 in fire, and then you can summon flame spirits, so that's good. Uh, he does help you a little bit with earth. He's pretty good. 
He's actually pretty darn good. I like him. Um, he's not going to help you in death. He's not going to help you in water. Um, but he's not going to help you in astral. Um, and the astral is kind of the big one that you kind of would want. Death is very important as well. And you kind of do not really have very good access to death and astral with this particular build. Um, I will tell you right now, I could even be convinced to do this. Um, doing something I think like this is actually a very good build as well. I actually kind of might even prefer it if I think about it. Um, and the reason that you might want to do this is with increased luck scales with their magic, you're going to be more likely to get heroes. And m many of your heroes are going to have astral magic. In fact, most of them are. Um, and so that kind of help, helps cover up that weakness a little bit. Um, now, another obvious option would be to just go ahead and do this number, something like this, right? Or even like, yeah, it'd probably be like this. This is also a decent build we're kind of fiddling around with a little bit. Um, yeah, that's actually pretty good. So now you can just straight up summon uh, Flame Spirits. This is also pretty good. It gives you that Astral Magic. Um, and then with this sort of build, you can go... There's quite a few really good options. There's three of them, in fact, that I think are all very good options. Whenever kind of coming up with what you're going to do with your, your Bless effect. Um, magic Weapons is good. Like I've, I've mentioned before, going over in my other videos... How magic weapons can be really helpful whenever you're uh you're going sacreds far caster i think is a very very good spell um particularly because you have a lot of spells um as a main man you have some spells as a main man at least that that are not going to be precision based and so having like your charm go 50 percent further is really good um so far caster is very very good um arcane finesse is a very good uh, spell as well because if you're going to be casting charm increasing that spell penetration is a big deal as well um there are different times when you might go for each of these and I'll, I'll probably discuss that a little bit later but these are kind of the ideas you're going to be looking at whenever you're going with a sort of national defender um kind of super combatant right you want pretty good scales um some nice magic diversity would be helpful good good magic paths to make him a strong early super combatant and this guy is going to be really strong as an early super combatant your opponent's going to need like some some significant magical uh, expenditures to actually kill him and a lot of nations won't have it um so that makes him very very good so that's really the best i've got for the dominion threes i really don't know whenever i would get any other one um and then we can hop on over to the monolith uh, I think that he's the best of the three options for the Dominions 4. Um, and what I would do with him is I would go Imprisoned. Um, which I kind of feel like for most of the time if you're going to Dominions 4 unit, I think most of the time you're going to want to go Imprisoned. Uh, I would go ahead, because I, I really like that Astral 4. Having that extra Astral Magic I find is very, very good. Um, and then I would go ahead and probably pump up my stuff to be somewhere in the category of like like this maybe uh, I think this would be okay I'd probably go ahead and go uh, reinvigoration right um, and maybe like let's just say I do far caster so this is actually a very good build as well you've got excellent scales okay you've got astral magic you've got earth magic now you're not gonna really be able to use that until later on so longer and wiseman and that sort of thing are gonna be necessary if you're trying to get into earth um, but these are very good scales near perfect if you're if you're, if you're protecting yourself from murderous winter they're basically perfect at that point um these are going to be very helpful on your casters reinvigoration and far caster um being able to because again remember with your communions they're entirely fatigue based regenerating hp doesn't help you with these communions because once they get to 100 fatigue they drop out the communion so what you want to do is have in any way you can to reduce that fatigue and so this can actually be quite helpful and strong um, you've got good stats here. Um, another option would be to not even do this, to pump this up, and then you would probably go magic weapons if you've got an increased level of, of astral magic, if, that, if you're trying to pump up your dominion at that point. Um, advantages of this are great, much better, be, the best scale so far, right? Exceedingly good scales. Um, you've still got a little bit of magic diversity. Uh, Earth Astral is a very good cross path. Uh, combo right it's going to let you uh forge some particularly good items particularly ones that let um the crystal matrix and that sort of thing 
are very, very important for this nation. Um, the Moonvine Bracelet is forgeable with this path, I believe. I believe you need two nature, I want to say. Let me double check that real quick. Moonvine Bracelet. Uh, you need three nature. Er, it actually makes things a little bit trickier. Uh, I mean, you could probably do this, right? Yeah. I wasn't even paying attention. So yeah. So yeah, with this, you can go ahead and you can forge a crystal matrix. You can forge a moonvine bracelet. Oh, can you? Yeah, there you go. You can forge a moonvine bracelet now. You can forge a crystal matrix, I believe. Now, now I'm doubting myself all over the place. Yeah, crystal matrix. Um... You can forge your crystal matrix uh, right away, no problem. That only requires one earth. Um, you're, uh, you're, you have to empower him to get crystal coin or something like that. But well, no, I guess uh, not really sure. The, there's some sort of problems associated with this because he, you're not able to equip him as, as heavily with magic items. So there is a little bit of awkwardness whenever it comes to trying to get the uh, the the immobile pretenders to kind of run for you a little bit, but. Like I said, excellent scales, good magic paths, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that uh, the monolith's the best, though the oracle's not bad either. But I think that for your for your budgeting, I think that the monolith is definitely the winner. So uh, that's kind of what you're looking at for your Dominion fours. I, I think uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll kind of talk about which ones I kind of value the most in a second. Then you've got your Dominion Ones, and, and, and you know, the Lich, the Demi Lich kind of falls into this category and such. These are your, your rainbows, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll spoil it right now, I kind of like these the best. So, I think your best one is probably your Great Enchantress. The Great Sorceress can be quite good too, um, sort of depending, but my favorite is the Great Enchantress because I do highly value getting that access to Astral Magic. I would also do Imprisoned with these, though I've done Dormant before and had some success. Uh, the Dormant... You do this if you want to have your increased sight searching, but I, I think you're fine going imprisoned personally. Um, I would probably do in an optimal build something like definitely want at least one point in earth magic. Um, like I said, for that crystal matrix, and she can wear boots, so you can get her up to two pretty easily. Um, I probably want at least two there, probably at least two here, maybe like. Uh, you really don't need astral uh, with this particular build. Let's see here. Ooh, that's not bad. Um, which one would I rather have? Let's think here. Uh, I think that these are both very justifiable. I think the fire is less important. Um, with this, you can do... Um, I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? This lets you forge the crystal coin right away, though, doesn't it? But it doesn't really matter. I, I guess I'd do something like this. Um, you could probably finagle a little bit and maybe put a point here and here or something like that, but I would probably go ahead and have a build something like this. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit. I think this is kind of the best build you could have going forward. This, this would probably be uh, a build I would consider to be the best. So let's talk about it. First of all, great scales. Okay. You've got pretty much perfect scales, not a lot of, uh, dominion. Uh, which can change your general plan, right? If you're if you're going if you're trying to go sacreds, this might not be optimal. You might want to cut out. I might cut out. Uh, I, I, I could feel justified in cutting this out. Uh, you might want to cut out this. If you're not going, um, if you are going to go sacreds, I, I think you might be better off going off uh, with a monolith. But if you're not going to go sacreds, I think going something like messed up uh, something like this is probably going to be your best build um, and even going sacreds with this isn't bad right because you are going to be building a lot of forts and temples very quickly so perfect scales pretty much um, other than the temperature of course um, I, I, and I, I would maintain this I think it's a good defensive thing and it does help you get some design points so that way you can kind of work out your magic um, diversity and with this you've actually got really excellent magic diversity right so you basically got fire um, you can pretty much summon the flame spirit right away. All you have to do is forge the um, flaming skull, and you've got the death and fire magic to do that. You put it on on this girl right here. She's fire three. She can summon flame spirits. Boom. Awesome. Uh, the next thing that this is going to give you access to is the uh, crystal matrix, like I mentioned before, which is very very valuable. Uh, with death two, she can form. She can make herself a, a 
a Skull Scepter, which is going to get her to death three, and she can summon Mound Fiends. And that basically unlocks everything from that point onward. Um, with Astral 4, it's a very important um, Astral level. It's where, you know, you're going to be able to put a, a Starshine Skull Cap on her and that sort of thing. Uh, this is also going to help you forge a Crystal Coin. Uh, so that, that can get her to Astral 6 very quickly. Then she can forge a, a, a Ring of Sorcery. And then with that, she can then forge a, a, a Ring of Wizardry. So this basically lets you entirely climb the Astral track. Um, astral um, Neutral Mages are not that hard to find, and being that you can put them into your choruses as communions, um, as communion masters, that's awesome, right? That pretty much gives you access to the entirety of Astral Magic. Um, which is really great and you can forge a lot of really excellent items with that uh, So you're covered in fire. You're covered in death. You're covered in astral with this So this is really executing what you want from a rainbow and you've got great scales uh, You're pretty much covered in earth at this point in time because you can forge the boots right away Even if your logreans aren't working out for you uh, Water magic is something that you're already uh, With just your your mages that you're able to recruit because you're gonna be recruiting a ton of mothers Air magic, you're pretty much covered. There's certain um, things that are going to be a little bit trickier with air magic. Um, as far as some rituals and such, like Gale Gate or something like that. But if you do... Um, and, and so, that is sort of a weakness. You can cast all the battle spells, no problem, with your communions. But it is a little trickier with rituals, so that's a little bit of a weakness there. But it can be overcome. about the moonvine bracelet right because you're not going to have access to this well if you're playing with the worthy heroes mod which most of the time you probably will be a lot of people really like to use the worthy heroes mob i actually advocate for it i think it's a very good mod um with luck and magic scales it is by year three you're gonna have gotten yourself an astral uh, an astral nature mage and so you're not gonna you're gonna be able to forge that anyway so it's actually not a big deal um i really like this one you can do similar kind of things with this with this lady here, um, it kind of this would be if you wanted to get a little bit better astral magic or something like that. Um, who else is really pretty good? Um, uh, I mean, this guy's okay if you want a little bit of the research bon bonus, but I feel like by that time it's not that great. This guy's okay, but he he kind of <clears throat> so the the frost father is probably is is actually like the best um, budget. Uh, the Frost Father is actually like the best budget uh, rainbow pretender in the game, but his his two uh, paths of air and water are actually not that great for you. I kind of feel like the best one is the Great Entrenchers, to be honest. I'm not really sure if there's any others I would really use. Uh, I mean, there's the the the, the Demi Lich is nice because you just right away can summon Mound Fiends and that sort of thing, but just kind of looking at them all, the Crone is okay. Um, but being that you're probably going to put the most points into Astro Magic, I think that one's really good. Now, let's talk about if you go four points in Astro Magic, which I think is kind of a given, uh, being what great access it gives you. Um, though, I'm not, I don't quite remember. I don't, I think you can get an Astral 3 with the Worthy Heroes mod. I think there's a, 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 a caster you can get that's an Astral 3. So, you can still get pretty far with it. Um... <clears throat> Let's talk about the Bless. So if you're gonna be going down this road, what Bless do you get? Well, Arcane Finesse, Farcaster, and Magic Weapons are basically all good. It just sort of depends on what you wanna do a little bit. So Magic Weapons, as I mentioned before, is very good if you wanna go with a Sacred Route. I really do recommend this. I actually think it's quite good. Many people probably disagree, but I think it works very well whenever you combine it with like Park Heist and stuff. Then you've got your Farcaster, which is uh, very good in Arcane Finesse. Now, of these two, I actually value Farcaster a little bit more. I actually prefer it. Um, there's a lot of spells that of which having that 50% combat uh, uh, spell range is actually very good. Um, especially if you're going to do later with something like Shimmering Fields or something to that effect. Having that higher uh, spell combat range is very, very good. Arcane Finesse is good too. Uh, when would I really want to use Arcane Finesse? There is one particular time I would. And if I think I'm going to be facing off against a lot of undead, having that plus one spell penetration is actually going to turn up your, your DPS, well, I guess your damage per turn technically in a sense, um, quite a bit. And this really does help 
uh, having that plus one protection. I think a lot of people value that over Farcaster, but I'm more of a Farcaster fan myself. I think it's a little bit of sort of, you know, dealer's choice about which one you actually end up going with between these two. Um, because if you're, if you're not going Sacreds, you go one of these two, and I, I, I recommend uh, Farcaster personally. But they're both very good. And, uh... Yeah, that's kind of the rough idea of what I would sort of recommend in hindsight. Now, let's take a look at what I actually did. So we're going to take a look at our great and, and wonderful um, god of Grace Kelly. So this is what I did with her. Now, you'll notice instead of going Earth, I actually go ask, I actually went Nature. Um, uh, otherwise, it's basically the exact same build I just mentioned. I had forgotten about Crystal Matrix whenever I made this. It just completely slipped my mind. I hadn't thought about it. So I ended up going with uh with nature so i can make sure i got the moonvine bracelet right with nature too you give her the a thistle mace and then she can forge a moonvine bracelet but uh and and that's good but i think it would have been better to have gone earth um i actually do something rather humorous in order to maintain earth astral uh presence and to make like crystal matrices and things like that uh but with all that good and said um this is still a very good build i i mean i think you can win with this uh, she's got uh, that benefit, that added benefit of generating astral pearls, which is of course very, very good, um, and I think that kind of adds to her value in a way that a lot of the other options don't. Um, I really like her. Now, I kind of did mess around with other options. Um, this is sort of a natural, de na a national defender kind of idea that I had had that is actually pretty good. Problem is, is that maybe I'm just bad. And, and, and I think part of it is that um, in all the games that I've used, um, the Tiwaz of War as a national defender, is that, like, he basically just out and out wins an early war if your opponent doesn't readily, doesn't really have an answer. So a good example is if you're going up against something like M.A. Like, like M.A. Satis has a hard time with this. Like, they have a very hard time dealing with this. This, this can cause a lot of problems for M.A. Satis. Um, uh, there are other times where if your opponent has access to strong air magic, you have to forge them a bunch of stuff to try and get them to work. It, it, it takes a, 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 the, there's a fantasy, I think, whenever you make this guy that you can just get him out of the box and just send him to war and he's going to tear stuff up. And in reality, it actually takes quite a lot of doing to make him work. Um, he's an excellent super combatant, but that's kind of all he is. Whereas if you were to go with a rainbow pretender chassis or with the um, the um, immobile, um, which li like so like for example, going with the um, let me grab this guy, going with the the monolith, like you have I think much better scales, is is just such a huge benefit. Um, and like look at this, I mean this is pretty damn fire. There are problems associated with this, but uh, doing something like this, I think, is actually like whew, pretty dang good. I mean, I'd even be willing to do this just to like. I think this would actually be quite a good build going sacreds. Um, you knock off a little bit of order. Order's the one that you can most readily knock off because you have very good luck scales. Eight or eight dominions, quite good. You're going to be able to make seven wardens a turn, pretty good. You've got the magic weapons. You've got pretty good magic diversity. You're lo you're lacking in death and fire, right? And that's that's going to be a problem. Um, there are ways to get death magic, and death magic's actually not that bad to scale in, right? Because generally speaking, the way you counteract both of these problems is with death magic. You would try to get in like uh, you would try to get like a um, I think there's a wolf tribe shaman that one in ten of them will have a uh, death magic in them. You try to get something like that that can have a chance of getting death magic. You empower them once for 30 death gems. Um, and it, just a, a level one can sight search with dark um, dark knowledge, by the way. So that's very helpful. You empower him once to get him to two. You forge a scepter, give it to him. He's at three. He can summon a mad fiend. And you're off to the races. Uh, with fire, it's a little bit trickier. Um, you could something like empower once uh, a logrian to get him to two. And then maybe try to pay a neighbor or something to forge you uh, a flaming skull or something to that effect. So that that way you can get him to three and then you can summon a flame spirit and you're off to the races. A little bit more doing to kind of unlock those two. 
Uh, but if you're okay with that, uh, I actually really like this build. This is, I think, your best sacred build. Um, but if you're going with, like, real magic diversity, I, I think, uh, I think this is kind of your sort of best build. Uh, as far as the expanders go, like I said, I think the Thrice Horn Boar is your best bet. I think they, I think he sucks. Um, because, uh, the reason I think he sucks is that you're basically trying to fight a weakness that you don't have. Like, you don't have this weakness. Like, you're, you're already going to be pretty good at expanding. Like, I think that man is already quite a good expanding nation. Um, and I think that going the thrice horn boar, you're just, you're trying to cover up a weakness that doesn't exist. And I mean, yeah, I guess you're kind of playing to your strengths, but I would rather have better scales as it's going to help you more in the late game and having more magic diversity, which is also going to be paramount in the late game. Uh, then I would really trying to focus on just mega fast expansion, which is good, but I don't think it's the way to do it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're, we're, we're taking a look at. And uh, like I said before, uh, we end up going with old Grace Kelly here uh, because she is a goddess. Um, I guess she was. Anyway, uh, with pretty good magic diversity, not quite as good as it should have been. Should have gone with Earth instead of uh, nature. Didn't Wasn't thinking about where the heroes well enough. And uh, very, very good scales. We're protected from Murderous Winter with... Um, with this sort of um, uh, heat scaling. I decided to go with Arcane Finesse. And the reason I decided to go with Arcane Finesse is that there were several detonations. Um, there's Airmore in this game. Uh, Satis is in this game. Um, uh, there's some death magic that can come out from Nifl, Nifl? I really should, I'm, I, I, I haven't pronounced it right. I don't think I'm pronounced it right this entire series. Because uh, I, I've said I used to say Niflheim, and then I got corrected, and I forgot what it was, and so I think that's just going to be it forever. So I have no idea. But death mages are going to be a thing in this game, and so I thought that giving a plus one penetration to my priests, particularly your monks, I think is going to be very very good uh, for MA man. So that is pretty much what I've got going on for my pretenders. Um, and uh, we're going to be riding on over with Grace Kelly. Anywho, uh, that's the end of our preparation, uh, sort of, for the game. Uh, my next video will be turn one. So, uh, until next time, I'm Les Pretender, and I'll see you guys next time.